on video. I don't know why. There we go. There you are. How are you? I'm fantastic. How are you? Excellent. It was a beautiful day on this side of the country today. How is it over there? Well, I'm in Vegas, so it's always pretty here, except for when it gets too cold. But I don't know. You don't want to hear that. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm sure with the mountains, it gets cold. It actually, you know what? It, it, it gets cold here for like six months out of the year. Like cold. Oh, that much? Yeah. Yeah. Late October starts getting chilly. In November, December, it gets down, you know, low 40s in the day, high 20s, low 30s at night. I mean, it's, and it's cold. I mean, it's, it's abiding cold because, you know, there's no, it's just dry air. It's cold, dry air. Yeah. Um, and then it finally starts to mellow out around March. Just as we're searching for some warmth. <laughs> I mean, we don't get freezing cold, but it, you know, it's good. It's it's a little too long. I, I prefer the heat anyway, so I'm a little bit of a baby. Well, I I, I guess I thought you were still in California. I I, I split my know. time. I split my time between San Diego and Vegas. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Very nice. So I see we have a couple of folks on, and everybody else should be joining here momentarily. I'm I'm expecting a dozen. Beautiful. How much time do we have? I figured an hour but whatever anybody okay. wants i mean i i'm kind of deferring it Hello. to all of you well i budgeted 90 minutes but we can take oh. an hour or we can take up to 90 minutes whatever you guys want sure and again i i think we had talked about if we this was something to do like a part two sometime we can explore that if that's an option oh totally I have one organization in California that next Tuesday will be our ninth oh. workshop. Oh, that's awesome! Ninth. Yeah, it's crazy. They're they they love it. And when we and we we do it the second Tuesday of the month, and in between, I send them writing prompts every Monday. Is it the same people every time well, or is it kind of a drop a, in? It's up to about 30 people, but um, there's maybe 10 that come every time and then 20 that rotate in and out. You know, I mean, sometimes there's 15 people there. Sometimes there's 30. There's kind of the core 10 and, um, you know, mostly and then and then a few others. Very neat. Wow. They keep busy, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, and most most of them never had participated in any type of, type of formal writing or journaling or expressive writing or anything up until we started working together. So it's really had a great impact on them, and I that's why I love to continue to do it. Very cool. Yeah. Jess, you do journaling, or you've been doing that a little. I'm going to put you on the spot because I know we've yeah. talked about it a little bit. Yeah. Um, not, I mean, I, I journal a little bit here and there right now. I did it a lot during my treatments just because mm -hmm. I needed a place to put the things <laughs> from here. I needed to dump out, but, um, yeah, I do journal. I like to do, you know, like affirmations, something that, like you said, gives a prompt. And then I kind of go from there for a little while I was doing, um, where I had to just free write three pages every morning when I first woke up and whatever wow. came up, I just wrote and wrote and wrote and it was really, really helpful. And it's interesting now, if I think back what I was probably writing at that time, it's interesting to see like how far I've come and what actually came to fruition based on what I was writing at the time. Very cool. Yeah, Very so cool. it was neat. It's a great way to process. It, it is, and ho hopefully, what I'll do is is help guide you to how to better process, how to deeper process, how to um, more quick quickly process. Because, um, and, and I'll frame it when, whenever we get started. We can get started now, or we can wait a few more minutes, but. Um, I'll, I'll tell you why I, I think it's important to do that, to be able to have more skill at, at 
at really understanding, like you say, and get from here to there, like get it out. Like I, I'm going to try to focus you to do that a little bit quicker. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, it, it's like when you go to the grocery store, if you just go in and out of the aisles, you're eventually going to get what you want. But if you, if you kind of figure it out ahead of time, Hey, this is the direction I'm going to go. And this, I'm going to start over here on the produce. I'm going to make my way over to the cheeses. I'm going to then hit the dry goods and get out of there. You're probably going to be a heck of a lot more efficient and you're going to spend half the time. And half the money. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you skip the cookie section. Exactly. <laughs> nice. So true. Well, you know, on that note, um, you know, it's five after seven and I think let's get started and anybody jumps in. They can jump in and we'll be good to go if that's all right with you, David. Yeah, super. So you can show yourselves, not show yourself, participate, don't participate. Um, What I hope to do, and I I do these workshops very, very regularly. What I hope to do is, is maybe just frame what expressive writing is. I'd like to give it a couple of different facets and we'll talk about that um, uh, so that I can um, help you um, along a journey of self-care and self-healing, if this is a part of what what you want to use to employ a little bit of self-care and self-healing. And why expressive writing is so important, if you'll um, just take a leap of faith and believe me, is there's been countless studies on the value of expressive writing, not just for emotional and psychological health, but for your physical health as well. I mean, it lowers blood pressure, helps you sleep better, lowers anxiety, um, makes you eat better. Um, You you experience less days off of work. You're going to experience less fatigue. You're going to feel less isolation and and um, just, you know, feeling disconnected from the world. Um, There's just a ton and ton of benefits. And the, the way I like to explain expressive writing is through like a visual. So when it comes to trauma and when it comes to emotions, uh, we tend to um, be little kids inside. And and even when we're not dealing with trauma and emotional stuff, we tend to be little kids inside. We're just using bigger kid words to try to impress all the other big kids that are little kids inside, you know, and try to match the big kid words that they're using. An example I was thinking about was I was on a run earlier today, and this is an example of the way that we talk to ourselves inside. So uh, picture yourself, you you got the courage to uh, go to the local swimming pool and you see that they have a 10 meter board and you're like, you know what, what the hell, today's the day. And you get up and you 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 climb up that ladder and you get up on the platform And all of a sudden you freeze and you're like, what the hell am I even doing up here? Oh my God, this is the stupidest thing ever, right? Like I got, like, I'm going to miss the pool. Like that's how bad of an idea this. I'm going to belly flop. And oh my God, look at this. Everybody's staring at me. It's probably because they either think I'm an idiot or maybe I look fat in my bikini. What the hell am I? Just, just climb down, get the hell out of here. You don't belong here. Okay. That's the way we talk to ourselves, okay? And then I say, well, now imagine, like picture a friend of yours that had kids and the little seven-year-old kid, the little girl that, that, that she has got the courage to climb up that 10, 10 meter board and is kind of frozen at the top. Do you now go grab your megaphone and go, hey, you up there, I know you, you think you could have done that, but you're pretty stupid, right? You think everybody's staring at you. Why? Because you're like, you think you have the strength to jump off of that board. You're just a moron. What are you doing up there? You would never, ever talk to your friend's little seven-year-old kid the way you talk to yourself. And, and what we try to do with expressive writing is to get that inner voice that we, we are so good at protecting ourselves. We're so good at blocking away trauma. We're so good at really belittling ourselves and our feelings because that's where we've had to deal with things so many times. Like how many times do you wait inside of a doctor's office and you're just like, seriously, does it have to be this freaking cold? And does everybody walking by me have to ask, you know, pretend like I'm an idiot? Like, 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 can't they see that I need help? And I'm sitting here for an hour. Why did they have me come in an hour ahead of time? This is completely stupid. Now I'm freezing cold. Everybody's so rude. 
And then the first person that comes up and talks to you, you're like, oh, yeah, well, thanks. No, I'm doing really good, right? Because we we have this different inside voice than the outside voice. And so what expressive writing is supposed to do at its simplest form is to allow some of those feelings to come out, allow you to explore what that inner voice is, allow you to process what's going on inside so that you can maybe possibly examine it, maybe if you're lucky, reframe it, maybe analyze it for how you might think differently. Um, sometimes you just wanna get in touch with how you're feeling about something and you don't know how you're feeling about it because all you're used to hearing is that inside voice. And so what, um, what I like to do with expressive writing is not just journal, which is fine. Go ahead and journal and between you and the, petter, uh, the paper shredder is fine. You don't have to do anything else other than write it out because it just is a different way to have a conversation with yourself. But if you can, if you can write it out with a little bit more depth than just a free writing kind of, you know, spill the words out on the page process, you really get to have a deeper conversation with yourself, even if eventually the paper just goes in the shredder, okay? And now if you really have the guts, you could read it out loud because if you ever wrote something, you're still reading it in your inside voice. If you hear yourself read it, man, that's a whole different story. And if you wanted to go a whole nother level, Read it to yourself while you're looking in the mirror. Try that on for size, right? That is a whole nother thing. And so um, what, what, I, what I think is a great practice, especially if you're trying to get in touch with your emotion, especially if you're trying to process how you feel about something traumatic that might be ongoing, it might be acute trauma, it might be secondary trauma, um, uh, then I think have, uh, having the tools to have a deeper conversation with yourself is really important. It's a great self-care and a great self-healing. So there's my little soapbox uh, description of what expressive writing is to me. So what I what I tend to ask people to do is to follow some basic rules when it comes to your expressive writing. And this is the like preparing to go into the grocery store analogy I was giving you. Um, one is um, we want to talk about feelings and not events, okay? Now, find it, go ahead and make a list, find a journal, like, you know, that's fine. You can make a list of things, but uh, the, where you're gonna get the best um, bang for your buck with the time that you spend is to have a talk about feelings, talk about the character, whether the character is you or the character is the parent that you wanna have a discussion with or the friend that you want to write something about whatever is 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 talk about the feeling side of that not the event side of it so example is instead of saying something like and i wrote down an example earlier instead of saying uh you know instead of making a list i had a great conversation with my friend mary last night instead of that which is fine okay that's, that's a list that's okay it say something like you know, visualize it, see it, talk about the feeling. I sat at the dinner table, unable to eat my food. I wanted to ask Mary for her advice, but I couldn't form the words, I need your help. That is getting in touch with the way you felt about the dinner last night. So not writing about the event, but writing about the character, the feeling of it. Like Mary, the character, you, the character, what you were feeling about the dinner. That is how you're going to be able to reframe um, things. No, number two is when you can, try to get rid of generic words. Why that's super important is uh, if I said uh, to you that it was important for me to write about my last, my doctor's appointment yesterday. And if I was uh, asking you to tell me how I felt about it, and I wrote, I walked into the doctor's office, you'd say, okay. But if I say I staggered into the doctor's office, or if you said, I trudged into the doctor's office, I sauntered, I strolled, 
right? I resisted walking to, I mean, there's a million ways that you could label that. Because if I said to you, I walked into the doctor's office, or if I said I, I staggered into the doctor's office, that that's feeling. And so when you can, and, and I do this as a writer, I, I have the thesaurus open all the time. And anytime I come to a generic word, I go, ah, ah, ah. Go, go over to the thesaurus and, and say what is representative of the feeling you're trying to express. So don't use boring or generic words if you can. Okay. Um, the last thing that I would uh, say is a good starting point for your kind of focus is to say the who, who, who you're writing for. And that's really, really important. Because when you sit down to a, a narrative, write about something, when, when you're expressing how you feel about an encounter, what you're going through, um, a lonely night that you can't get to sleep, so you're going to get up and write. When you're doing that kind of thing, who are you writing for so you can frame the voice properly? Are you writing it for a friend? Are you writing it for the paper shredder? Because it's like you don't want anybody to see what you're going to write, so it's going directly into the shredder. Are you writing it for an estranged parent or an estranged child? Are you writing it for your best friend? Are you writing it so that you can hopefully come back and read it in 10 years and see how you felt about something that you were going through? So are you writing it for your 10 years future self? Who are you writing it for? That will really allow you an open space to, to, to really dial into your emotions. Does that make sense? Do you know, like if I wrote about a, a situation, like I'll give you an example that was just, the, one of the most touching examples ever is is a who this lady wrote this this thing about at one of the meetings that I went to she she wrote a, a thing about um, nobody was going to keep her uh, from leaving the hospital okay and it, it, it I, I kept asking her go go deeper go deeper tell me more tell me more tell me more and 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 basically she didn't she, nobody could have kept her from leaving the hospital, even though her procedure wasn't done because she wanted to get to her son's graduation. It was from not, not a high school graduation, but from an, from a little event he was doing. And she wanted her, her, the, his younger son, the, the younger, the younger son, his, uh, his younger brother to see that she was invested in, and the pride that she had for the brother because the younger a son was going through some difficulty. And I said, well, write, write that letter. And she wrote this absolutely stunningly beautiful little note saying, all I needed to do was get out of that hospital because I needed to show you that you're as important as your brother. You can do things that he can. I know you're having a tough time and I needed to be there for you. Nobody was going to prevent me from being by your side watching your brother on the on the stage and I thought oh my god that was so powerful and so beautiful and allowed her to really process what she was going through and just the who made it made it so more poignant and so more so much more therapeutic I think for her all right so anyway questions comments concerns I took up 15 minutes of our time No. All right. I appreciate that. Good. I'm doing my job. So how about some prompts? And here's uh, the plan. I, it's up to you, <clears throat> collective you, if you want to share. Sometimes we do writing circles where we're not allowed to even comment. Good job. Bad job. I feel you. You know, that was great. Nothing. Or there's times when we do writing circles where if people want to share, they share. And I encourage that only because um, you get to hear yourself say it. So it's a, it's a whole nother voice, right? 
So I'm going to leave it up to you. Do not feel self-conscious if you do share. Do not feel self-conscious if you don't share. I guarantee you nobody's judging you. Um, I will tell you that in the hundreds plus workshops I've done, the ones that share, we get a little bit more meaning out of it because there oftentimes is a um, feeling of well, I'm not alone, right? Like I, I, feel, I feel what you're writing about. Um, and so um, uh, no judgment either way for me. Um, I'm going to get to where I, where I um, put down some prompts. But I'm just saying that if you would like to, I certainly would be happy to have a share. So do we want an easy prompt, a medium prompt, or a hard prompt to start? Anybody? What do you medium. think? Jessica? I would say medium. <laughs> a medium prompt. All right, good. Yeah, medium sounds good. A medium prompt is good. So a medium prompt is, for, for me, an easy prompt is just to uh, uh, loosen up. It's like doing some stretching. Wow, that was good. Um, it's just to do some stretching. An easy prompt is, you know, I walked into the doctor's office and that's an easy prompt. Okay. A hard prompt is more of a, yeah, we're going to write a letter to someone. Okay. That maybe it's about something negative. A medium prompt. I, I love these medium prompts. So I'm going to tell you a story and I don't know anything about anyone's background. Okay. I'm going to tell you a story about Wendy. And I'm going to ask you with your, when you do a writing prompt is from your experience. If you have such experience to from whatever angle is that write a little note to someone named Wendy and Wendy is the primary caregiver to her father, who's a very, very tough dude. He does not know how to accept help. He is an old school macho, I got this kind of guy and he has a uh, stage four stomach cancer. It's metastasized and she is caring for him. And how difficult is it for him to allow her to put a feeding her, his feeding tube in and take it out. And I mean, his own daughter, this dude is like a total macho, whatever. And the stripping away of his pride, his dignity. He feels embarrassed. He feels ashamed. And she is so grateful for the fact that um, he is allowing her a little bit into this world of his. But she's afraid to ask him how he feels about it. And in fact, he passes away. And she says, yeah, on the one hand, I'm grateful because he let me share it. But on the other hand, I have some regrets because I didn't ever have the courage to do it, nor did I felt he gave me the space to ask him how he felt about what he was going through, the emotional side of it. So a medium prompt, I think, would be to write a letter to Wendy based on framing around your experience. If you could make her feel better, And the, and the prompt uh, and, and, and the prompt would be, I understand why you didn't have the courage. Let me tell you a story. You can frame it around your own experience as a, as a, as a patient, as a primary caregiver, as an observant, just as an emotional human being, whatever experience you can bring to that. And but, but try to make it about your feelings and how you feel about that, okay? So um, it is 724. Why don't we go like 10 minutes, if that's fair? Not super hard. So Prompt we're it. trying to make her feel better about... I, just watch this. I understand why you didn't have the courage let me tell you a story. She was a, she didn't have the courage to ask her dad how he felt. Mm. Now, I don't know a single person that's ever not 
not known what the hell do I say to somebody who's going through something like that? Or if you're going through something, I don't know what the hell like to say to the person that I know they want to talk to me, but I don't know how to let them in. Right. I, I, I think everybody can identify with, with, with poor Wendy who is afraid to ask her dad how he feels about it. Thank God he's letting her take care of him a little bit, but she, she doesn't have the courage to ask how he feels. And she's really torn up about it because he's gone. He, she doesn't have that chance anymore. So your prompt is, I understand why you didn't have the courage. Let me tell you a story. And you're going to tell Wendy a story about your own experience. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So 10 minutes, we'll come back, share or not share. Although I hope you do. <laughs> okay. You can turn your cameras off, do whatever. I'm going to be sitting here. If you want to, uh, Send me a note in the chat, do otherwise I'm going to shut up.
Okay, let's wrap it up in like one more minute. You don't have to have finished the story. All right. So how was that prompt? What do you think, Paso? Felt like I was Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> I think you you knew something about me. Uh, I, I don't know if I did this right. I just felt a little in Wendy's position. And so that's what I wrote from. Uh, I'm happy to read it. Again, I don't know if I if I answered it correctly, but you know, you're welcome to tell me. Sure. And remember, uh, expressive writing is not a judgment thing and you should never judge your own writing. It's just a conversation that you're having. And we never remember conversations anyway. Um, expressive writing really is for you and the paper shredder, right? And there's no judgment. If you want to keep it, if you want to send it as a letter to someone, that's a whole different story. And you're welcome to do that. And trust me, it's there's still no judgment in that. Right. Um, uh, so I, I'm sure you didn't do it wrong. Okay. Right. All, all we wanted to do was get you to tell a story. And sometimes it's a little bit easier to tell somebody else's story than to say how you feel about something first person. That's okay. all. So if you want to share, I'd love I'd love for you to share. Sure. I understand why you didn't have the courage. Let me tell you a story. My father is a very proud man, a first generation American and very strong in his ways and has recently been told he has incurable heart disease. As a daughter, I have seen him turn into a toddler. I say this because his emotions have been a roller coaster, but always with the attitude that I don't need help. I can do it myself. I don't need help managing the dozen pills per day he now takes as compared to the zero he had before. I don't need you to come to my appointments and ask questions for me. I have felt I am a source of added stress to him when I want to help. I know he can get very angry and doesn't like to talk about his worsening condition because he now sees himself a weak man when he was always known for being his, known for his physical strength. When things reached a peak in some respects, he consented to me being added to his HIPAA. From that, I took it as a positive, but that I can kind of help from a distance. I'm trying to walk a thin line of giving him space and keeping a father-daughter relationship, but letting him know how much I truly love and care. Your father saw all that you did for him and that all that came from you was your love for him. I hope my dad does too. That's perfect. Sorry. See, you brought the emotion out. <laughs> I no, you brought the emotion out. And and it's it's really sweet. And thank you for sharing because um you weren't crying when you wrote it. You you heard your words and, and that sh that reframed the the discussion. It reframes how you feel about it. You got to feel more connected to your emotions right now. You have to. You have to be more connected to your emotion. And it's I feel like it's a beautiful letter to Wendy. Any anybody else? Any comments or or, or anything you'd want to say? No, I think that's perfect. I I I know Vaso and I know what her family has been through in so many ways in these past 11, 12 years as far as health goes. And um, you know, her dad. Her dad's very similar to my own dad, being a Mediter Mediterranean man. And they don't want to accept help and they view illness as weakness and they just, they just can't, they just 
they just can't accept it as an, you know, they can't accept, they can't accept that as a natural part of life. And, um, uh, but, um, I think that was a beautiful way of identifying with Wendy by reflecting her own experience with her dad. So I think mm-hmm. that was a really beautiful job for us. Thanks, Alia. Yeah, no, and really, it takes a lot of courage to share too. And and I promise you, no, nobody's judging you on your writing, and, and it's very sweet for you to be open and and vulnerable. Um, I, I just, you know, I I I'm gonna say this probably every 15 minutes. If we did a hundred of these, I'd say it, you'd hear me say it a thousand times. All expressive writing is supposed to do is get you more in touch with that inside voice, so you can process your feelings a different way, a deeper way. And in a way that a lot of us never do, mm-hmm. right? We just never do. We just we just continually have that same inside voice talk with ourselves, which just doesn't help. Just doesn't help. So it's, it's, it's a great start. Does anybody want, else want to share what they wrote to Wendy? Is uh, it I'll Alia? share, but mine's in. Oh, Sean, Sean. Yes, hi. Hi, Sean. Hello. That's beautiful. Cher, I, lo- I love it. I, we don't have to see you, but we can hear you. I love that. Mine's going in a completely different direction. So lay it on us. Okay. Dear Wendy, I understand why you didn't have the courage to ask your dad how he felt, but let me tell you a story. When I was going through chemo, my body was completely out of my control and so many things came as a shock to me. The last time I had used a maxi pad, I was in middle school. But now I found I needed them to throw up or else I'd be doing laundry all day. You would not believe how much more absorbent they become since 1996. In some ways, I was just relieved I wasn't reduced to a diaper. Is this the type of conversation you'd want to have with your dad? Probably not. I married into a family with absolutely no boundaries, so I've seen both sides of things. My husband's brothers lay out when they're pooping, not getting too much action in the bedroom. Sometimes it, gets absol- um, sometimes it feels like absolutely nothing is sacred. So I told them about my pad diapers. Why not? I've had to hear about their stuff for the past 13 years, and there was virtually no reaction. My sister-in-law said she wears them because she pees herself post-pregnancy. No one cares. My family of origin, on the other hand, isn't like that. Anything that's discussed medical is in a clinical fashion, if at all, and my parents would prefer not to be discussed at all. Your Your dad probably appreciates that you met him where he was at. He was the one in the situation that would have to talk about something that he probably didn't want to. Yeah, you definitely went in a different direction and a perfect direction. I mean, honestly, that's fantastic because um, if, if I were Wendy, I would feel so much better hearing that letter. I don't know about anybody else. But I would be like, oh, thank you for telling me that stuff. Because look at how much better I'm going to feel about myself. Right? Wow, that was great. I, have you have you written before? Uh, not in any formal way. But but I mean, like this kind of stuff. Have you done this this kind of stuff before? Yes, yes. I've, I've taken a, a lot of Amy's classes. So we've done some stuff like this in her classes. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I don't know about all of you, but I, I got um, um, a, great visuals. Like I, I got great visuals there. And that's really important because um, some people write um, what, what, what the way it sounds and some people write the way they see it. And, and I love that because, right, we have all these different types of senses and all these different types of ways to get into our emotions and to see, to see things you know, that's why I, I say skip generic words so so that you can feel it um, and see it. You know, like I, I could I could see I could picture in my head these these conversations and the way everybody would probably just look at it. You like you were weird for being self conscious for telling me that because we talk about that stuff all the time, right? So really, really good. That was that was really good. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. I think in the spirit of time, we should move on to another prompt. And unless you want to stop me either, Jennifer, and I want to pronounce your name right. Is it Alia? Alia. Yep. Uh-huh. Alia. 
Unless yeah. you want to share, um, uh, we can move on. It's up to you. I can share. I don't mind sharing. Mine should well, be share because we got extra time. We, I, I'm not going anywhere. Why don't you share, and okay. then we'll, and then we'll move on to the next prompt. Okay, dear Wendy, <clears throat> I understand why you were afraid to ask your dad how he felt about his situation. I'm in a situation right now where one of my best friends just lost both her parents less than three weeks apart this past month. They had been married 56 years and the husband, her father, died first. And then his wife, her mother, died a little over two weeks later. I'm not really sure how to ask her how she is feeling in this situation, meaning my friend, how, or how I can help. I almost feel like any of my requests might be seeming trivial. I've experienced loss, but not this kind of loss. So all I can think to do is to show her I care by my actions. My first was to just send her a card, simply just that. Then by flying into Pittsburgh to be there for her parents' memorial mass, I plan to make my presence known to her so she knows I care. In other words, I don't have to tell her in words that I care, though that of course certainly does hurt, doesn't hurt. Rather, I can show her by my actions that I care and I'm there to support her. My guess is that your caregiving actions showed your dad that you cared about how he felt. You didn't need to necessarily ask him. He knew by all you did for him each day. So don't beat yourself up about not explicitly coming out and asking him. From the little we've learned about him, he may not have known how to express himself and rather was probably silently grateful you were just there for him. That's all I have. <laughs> oh my gosh. I want to wrap up these letters and send them to Wendy, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. And do, do you, right, right, there was some of your situation, your friend's situation, uh, some of your, I, I, I understand how you feel, right? And th that's, that is a great practice run into how you feel about something first person, right? So absolutely beautifully well done, very touching, very caring. And wow, wouldn't it be nice if we could talk to ourselves the way that we talk to Wendy, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very. Yeah. All right. So with, with that in mind, I have a prompt that is one of my favorites. Um, and I'm stealing the title of it from my editor, um, who was telling me about the best title that of a book that she ever worked on. She's written seven books and edited hundreds of books. And it was a a psychiatrist, a doctor, who her and her husband had reached the point where everything that they were trying to do to have kids was going to be unsuccessful. And now she was at a point where she was never going to have kids. And the book was going to be entitled The Other Side of Never. And she was going to explain how do you get to the emotional side how do you process the emotional side of the other side and never I'll, ne I'll never have kids which is a wow is that a stark visual in my head of the other side and never how many times have we said or have we had or heard others say i'll never do this or i'll never be able to do that or whatever i the other side and never is just a i think it's a beautiful concept so i think our prompt should be we're thinking on ourselves about the other side of never. Okay. Um, so the prompt is that I'll never, you can think about it for a minute. What? I'll never have kids. I'll never be active. I'll never be here to celebrate my 50th birthday. I'll never be able to talk to my child again. I don't know what the other side of never is. And it doesn't have to be something terribly traumatizing. It doesn't have to be anything, you know, as 
stark as any of those examples, but it could be if you wanted it to be. And just think about like one of those things that you've said recently or sitting here thinking about is something important in your life, a seminal, the other side of never, like I'll never be able to what? And then I want you to think about how do you feel about this? And if you can, I want you to write it to yourself and just explore how you feel about that thought of I'll never dot, dot, dot. What is it? And that's really the, the prompt. I'll never bang, right? Like I could be wrong, but I haven't talked to my mom in 40 years. I don't think I'll ever talk to my mom like ever, right? I think she just, she's not interested, right? And so she hasn't been interested since I was a teenager. And so I, I think what I, if I wrote this prompt out right now, because it's been on my mind for, uh, I was on a couple of podcasts earlier today, and we talked about this issue. And, um, and I, and I, and I said, I said on one of them today, something to the effect of, like, I'll never know what it's like to have a caring mom. Like, I'll just, ne I'll never know that. So if I was going to participate in this prompt, I will say, I, I would say, I'll never have a loving mother. And I'm going to write how I feel about that. Because I feel like I'm on the, uh, that other side of never, right? So that would be your prompt. I'll never, whatever. And then this is how you feel about it. Write it to yourself. And so we'll take a few more minutes for this one since we have time and we're such an intimate group. I love it. So if we can, unless you call me out of my trance and I'm here, I'm just going to turn off my video and sound, but I'm, I'm, I'm here staring at the screen. Um, I say we give it like 12 minutes. Unless you call me in and say, no, 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 we're all done. Okay. So I'll never dot, dot, dot. And how do you feel about it? Okay, go.
So let's wrap up in another minute or so. All right. <clears throat> so what do you think? Was that a little tougher? No, I thought that one was easier. <laughs> ah. <laughs> All right. All right. I like it. I like it. Well, I literally have dozens and dozens and dozens of prompts. So if we ever do this again, we can we can try to stump you with a tougher one. Um, so Jennifer and Sean, if you're done and still with us and dialed in, we still have some time if you guys want to share, if you want to talk about this prompt, um, how does everybody feel about it? I saw you reaching for the unmute button, Alia. I saw you reaching for the unmute button. I don't know. Was I? I don't know. Well, I, I think can, you I were. <laughs> okay, I'll share because this this one was this one was pretty uh, pertinent to my situation. So I can I I yeah. This one came came out pretty well for me at least it, it, it didn't maybe it isn't very eloquent but I was able to get the thoughts out pretty effortlessly <clears throat> okay the other side of never I'll never be able to walk briskly in the park again and have it not be about this ugly brace I wear to passers-by I understand the feeling of never after my last sarcoma surgery, the doctors had to remove a piece of my sciatic nerve. That made my foot go paralyzed. Now to walk, I have to wear a brace that keeps my foot at a right angle so that when I do walk, I don't trip over my own toes. While I try to remind myself to be grateful to walk at all and even have my leg, I find myself feeling endlessly defeated that now it's with a limp and at half the pace it once was. Plus, this brace is so not cute, and I can't wear the fashionable shoes like I once did. Yes, I'm a victim of my vanity. Before this surgery, I rejoiced in runs, and especially in brisk walks in the park near my house. I would drop my son off at school and then proceed to do many laps on the beautiful park's trail. Especially at this time of year, I love to walk along the park path, energetically swinging my arms and making laps, listening to music or a podcast, feeling so alive and free as I took in the beautiful autumnal fall scenery. Now with this limp and with the eyesore of the brace, I'm afraid to go on walks because I know I don't walk as smoothly and anywhere I go, people's eyes constantly fall to my brace with this questionable curiosity. 
when I'd rather they'd focus on my eyes or my greeting smile. It is a loss I've mourned for the past two years since the surgery. I feel sad, I grieve daily. When I see people running or walking out and about, I experience a mourning in my heart. And I say to myself, they have no idea how lucky they are to be able to, pu to put one foot forward so effortlessly. I pray every day for the unlikely miracle that my sciatic nerve repairs itself, or I have a biblical be made whole moment. But my better judgment, or maybe, it, or maybe it's my more cynical side, tells me this is highly unlikely, and I've just got to get used to this as my new normal. And I don't want it to be. It's been two years, and I still struggle to accept this new normal. Fortunately, I can cycle, but I really miss those fall days walking in the park. While I can't do them as I once did, I will always retain the beautiful memory of them. And that's all I have. You're right. Not eloquent at all. <laughs> 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 what the hell that was beautiful I, who couldn't see her walking in the park <laughs> no it's, that's ex i mean wow that's really amazing yeah. i mean really i mean very beautiful thank you and i feel like you are super in touch with that have you written that kind of stuff before about that have you dealt with that before no, this is actually the first time I wrote about it. I think about it all the time. It's always in my head. But this is actually the first time I ever put it on paper. And it does make me emotional to do that. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I mean, look, I, I, I don't understand how it wouldn't. Right? I don't understand how it wouldn't. Um, because of something that you're so proud of and um have so much love for and it's been taken away you know yeah. at least at least not not entirely but certainly in a form that uh, you know now you have to think about it before you just enjoyed it right yeah that's and right now, and now and other people just just walked by and smiled at you now they walk by and go what the hell is going on with her yeah yeah mm -hmm. <clears throat> so i'm not a therapist i'm not i'm, I'm not professionally trained I'm just a writer, okay? If if I were you, I think that it would be very helpful for you to uh, write in the present tense on that after you go for your next kind of slower than you like walk. Mm -hmm. Still autumn, right? Or is it fall now? I don't know the difference. I'm li I live in the way. Same. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing. Um, <laughs> So you could, you you know, so you still have time to do that. And if you can find the space afterward to write in the present time, I think that might help you as well. Because yeah. it's clearly something, I, I mean, God, I can't even imagine how I, how I would be able to feel about that, right? I, I, I'm, a, I'm a runner, I run every day almost. And so mm -hmm. I couldn't even imagine how I would feel about that. So I, I would have to process some probably unending emotions over it so um just because i believe in expressive writing i i love i love that it was both past tense and a little bit of present tense for you mm -hmm. but but it wasn't like like immediate present tense and if you if you if you do that again and again and again i think you're you're going to become more at peace with your feelings about it. Mm. Okay. But I found what you wrote terribly eloquent. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Thank you, David. Yeah. And I'm not supposed to judge. <laughs> I'm not, right? <laughs> no, this is a no, no judgment space, but pretend that, pretend that I'm just a figment of your imagination and you just told yourself how great it was. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thanks to everybody for listening. <laughs> Yeah, it's really no. Thank you for sharing too. I mean, it takes takes a lot of courage. Um, anybody else? Sean, Jennifer, Vaso, do you want to share by any chance? Don't 
Don't have to. I'm not going to call anybody else out. Lace, <laughs> whoever you are, you're late, but you caught the last couple minutes of this and that's totally fine. Life gets in the way of everything. Here's what I would suggest <clears throat> because we don't have a lot of time, right? So we're going to go an hour. It's an hour 15. Is I'm going to leave you with a prompt. And Vaso, if you want to have me back, I'll be happy to come back um, with uh, just the five of you or any more or any less. It's fine. It doesn't matter to me if it's one person or, you know, no more than about 50, though, because it gets a little, little rough after that. But um, um, if, if you want to, if you want to have me back, at, at whatever, uh, in 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 a month or in six months or what, it, it's up to you. What, whatever you think might might be a, a value to everyone. Um, and if if you want to do uh, one more prompt, and I'm gonna only suggest that we do this, and then call it a night because I don't want to force anyone to to share. Um, but this one would be maybe a little more um, uh, more about emotional, uh, about, uh, more about your emotions. And this is that you have someone in your life who's kind of new, okay? Who's made an impact. It's, I don't know, you joined a support group and somebody really touched you. Um, you had a friend of a friend that came over for a glass of wine and you were just like, really, wow, that person's kind of amazing. I don't know who it is, but a friend of a friend has had a, um, an impact on like, like you, that you, you're kind of shocked about that. Like, why are you still thinking about that person? And it could be a positive impact. It could be a negative impact. Okay. I recently had uh, a, a negative interaction with someone that I didn't know. And I don't know why it's still bugging me, but it's just bugging me. <laughs> right. I'm like, why? Like, like, I can't even imagine that person who was that much of a jerk when we met each other. And I'm just like, the person that told me about him said he was a really great guy. And I'm like, this guy was a total dick. Excuse my language. And I'm <laughs> like, like, why? Like, 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 why? We don't know each other. Like, how are you going to be like that? And, but, what is bothering me is it's, it's my, like not two weeks, but it's like 10 days later. And I'm still like shaking my head, scratching my head going, why was this guy such a jerk? Right. Who, who's that much of a jerk? And so what I like you to do is write that person a letter. Dear so-and-so, I've been meaning to tell you or I've been needing to tell you the impact that you had on me. Dot, dot, dot. It could be positive, it could be negative, but why it's important that it's somebody new is oftentimes we don't process fresh emotions because we're so worried about all the BS that we have tucked away. And when we start thinking about emotion, it's really easy to gravitate towards the things that we're very familiar with, e even if we don't know how to have that conversation with ourselves in a different way, if that makes sense. So somebody new that's having an impact, positive or negative, I'm going to stay on, but I'm going to, I'm going to cut off at, at, at the bottom of the hour. I don't, the only reason I'm going to stay on is every, anybody wants to chat or make a comment. Don't feel compelled that you have to. And you can cut out now or you can st stay on. You know, we'll all cut off at the bottom of the hour, whatever. Um, and, but that would be the third prompt if you'd like to take a part of, in it. Somebody that's recently entered your life that's had a positive or a negative impact on your emotions. And you really need to explore why. Like, I, I got to write this guy, this woman a letter, right? Dear so-and-so. I've been meaning to tell you, or I've needed to tell you, um, the impact you had on me, dot, dot, dot. And yes, Vaso. You're good. So does this fall in the hard category? Yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I feel like this is hard. 
It's it's definitely it's hard. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I purposely pulled it up for, for right now so that we wouldn't have to go too hard into it. Because sometimes when you think think about it, maybe, maybe nobody recently has had an emotional impact on you. So you're going to have to search for it. Or maybe they do and you're just like, not sure. Like, why the heck am I going to write them a letter? There's a method to the madness. And that is what I, what I hope that it's going to be able to do is to get you to understand how you feel about something that's happening kind of unexpected and kind of recent. Right. Because we're really good. And, and sorry to pick pick on you, Alia, right now, but you're really good about understanding how you feel about taking a walk in the park. Now, you haven't written about it before, but you've talked you've had that internal talk with yourself a thousand times, probably. Mm -hmm. So it's great for you to tap into that. But sometimes isn't it nice to know that you need you need to develop the skill on how to tap into something that happens right away. And if you can, for example, you have a, somebody has an emotional impact on you at, at the doctor's office, from a support group, at work, with a friend or whatever, that you just go home and deal with it right then. Because wouldn't it be nice just to get it off your back, get the feeling, the emotional uh, out of it. We normally don't do that. And look at me. I haven't taken the time to, to get over this absolutely insignificant little thing that happened. And I'm still shaking my head going, what the heck? Right? Why? Why? Why am I carrying around that little weight? Wouldn't it have been better for me at some point to sit down and write up myself a little note? Hey, dear so and so, let me tell you why you were such a jerk, and I don't understand why. And this is why it's bugging me because you reminded me of so and so, and la 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 la. Right? And maybe I can purge it and move on to more important things in my life, like worrying about walking in the park. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. So bottom of the hour, and then um, Basso, just l let me know. Tomorrow or in a month, if you want me back and we'll figure something out. Okay. And thank you all for being brave to show up and, and also most definitely to share. Even you, Sean. Thanks, David. Yes. Okay. I'm here, uh, but I'm only monitoring the chat.